In this video, we're going to learn about free fall on Earth. In other words, acceleration due to gravity. And the value will be a constant 10 meter per second square. That means to say, if you were to drop uh, an object from your hand right now, the moment you release it, this ball will go faster and faster, and the acceleration will be a constant value 10 meter per second square. In other words, in one second, the speed of the Earth object will increase by 10 meter per second okay that's what it means now let's take a look at the speed time curve so this is the speed against time graph here and the graph will start from the origin here because at time equals to zero the moment you release it the speed is zero and then it will be a straight line with a constant gradient and what it means is in one second the speed of the object that you drop will be 10 meter per second and two second the speed will increase by another 10 and now the speed will be 20 that's what it means visually it means that if this is the position of the ball then that you just released at time equals to zero seconds the speed will be zero meter per second at time equals to one second this is the position of the ball and the speed right now will be 10 meter per second and at time equals to 2 seconds, the speed will be 20 meter per second and the position will be here. If you realize the distance covered every second is getting bigger and bigger. Let this be D1 and you have learned previously if I were to find the distance covered by the ball D1, I have to look at the area underneath the graph that will be your D1. And if I need to find D2, the, that will be the area under the graph here. And you can see, it's very obvious, the area is greater. That means to say every second, the ball actually cover a greater distance. So it's the speed is increasing, it's accelerating. And in fact, for this situation, the acceleration will be a constant 10 meter per second square where you assume there's no air resistance over here. So this is the graph that will, you will get. Next, I will show you three examples where the object will follow this speed time graph. Let's take a look at the first example. You have a building here and you release two identical compact balls from position A and B. So this height is about 10 meters. Another example will be three compact identical size so compact balls here so this can be let's say copper this one iron and the next one wood and the third example is you have a bowling ball which is extremely heavy versus a basketball okay and you release them from a height of let's say 1.5 meter and let's say you release here from two meters now let's take a look at the first example here if you were to release a and b at the same time, obviously, A will reach a higher speed just before it reach the ground because of its longer distance, it has more time to increase in speed. So just before reaching the floor, the speed of A will be greater than the speed of B just before it reach. But and another thing that's common for both of them will be acceleration due to gravity will be the same 10 meter per second square because of its compact size air resistance can be ignored likewise for the second scenario where all the three balls even though they are made of different material because of its compact size the surface area is so small and you are dropping from a height of two meters which is relatively short the speed of all the balls will not be too high so once again you can ignore the air resistance and both all three of them they will drop at the same time at the same speed and at any particular time they the speed are the same and the only thing that's constant will be all three of them will have the same acceleration 10 meter per second square and even for this third uh, example here many will have the misconception thinking that because the fact that the bowling ball is so heavy it will hit the floor first but because it's the same idea because of its substantial mass 
okay and the height that it dropped is 1.5 meter the speed in which it falls is not that high so air resistance once again is negligible so if you were to do it right now i mean if you release both the bowling ball and the basketball right now both will actually hit the floor at the same time and the only thing that's constant once again is the acceleration due to free fall 10 meter per second square so for all these three examples because there's no air resistance or rather air resistance is negligible the shape of the graph the speed time curve will look exactly like this a straight line with constant gradient starting from zero next i'll show you three examples where air resistance is present or rather you need to take into consideration air resistance for example this ball that's dropped from high up in the sky and you have a shutter cord and even a feather now let's take a look at the first example if this ball were to release from high up in the sky it will undergo initial acceleration of 10 meter per second square and it will keep on falling the speed keep on increasing but because as it the speed increases air resistance will come in this is the weight of the ball which never changed but as you go faster and faster the air resistance will increase until a point where the air resistance is equals to the weight that's the moment where the ball can has reached a maximum constant speed so it cannot increase in, in its speed anymore and we have a term for it called terminal velocity now another good example would be imagine this is a cylinder filled with oil and you release a tiny ball bearing here if you release it it will go faster and faster but very soon because of the oil viscosity this ball bearing will continue to fall at constant speed from then on okay so this is uh, easier to visualize for the next two examples, what's so common in both of them is a structure where the surface area is big, so air resistance cannot be ignored. So you have to consider, that means to say, when it first release, it will undergo free fall 10 meter per second square, but very soon, as the speed increases, the air resistance increases, so it will reach its terminal velocity, and from then onwards, it will just fall at constant speed. So how would the graph for these three examples look like? But before we go into that, I want to draw your attention to something very important. Now, whether there's no air resistance or where there's air resistance, the moment you release the ball, the initial acceleration of the ball will be a constant 10 meter per second square. Okay, so take note of that. A lot of students have the misconception thinking that the moment you release the ball the speed is zero so by right there shouldn't be any acceleration that is wrong because the moment you release it the weight is already pulling it down and is there is a constant acceleration let's go back to the speed time curve now as mentioned just now this is the graph where there's no air resistance but if there's air resistance so the initial part will be the same because it will be the same acceleration 10 meter per second square but as you go faster and faster air resistance will be more prominent and it keep on increases until a point where the weight is equal to the air resistance and from then on you will move at a cons maximum constant speed in other words this is your terminal velocity so this is a case where air resistance is present and you cannot ignore that so there is a difference between an object experiencing air resistance or no air resistance as it falls so you must know this well